So, why are you here at a math course asking about crime scene investigation or learning about crime scene investigation? Anybody? Yeah. It's interesting? Why would it be interesting? You don't know. Okay, back there. What's that? How can it be connected to math? How can it be connected to math? Today we are in the University of British Columbia. Can you tell us what we are doing today? Well, today is the Mathnasium Math Conference and competition for grades 8, 9, and 10. This is sponsored by the Engineering and Geoscientists Association of British Columbia to allow young people to explore the wonders of math and enter a competition to perhaps even get scholarships and further their career. Great. So how would you help the students to progress in their education? Well, as a chemical engineer, I participate in having courses and giving lectures. And in fact, every spring break, I do a five-day course for high school students in grades 8, 9, and 10. All the math and sciences. And why are math and sciences important? Uh, so can you tell what you do in these courses? Like, what would you do in the first day? Well, the students have to apply to the competition in, in the course. So they have to go through an interview process, present their resume and their cover letter. And we test them on their interviewing skills. Then once they get into the course, I work with a professional prosecutor lawyer and we teach the students about the environmental law principles, about the principles of the court, and into science and engineering. Anybody hear anything about pipelines? So how would the students get more interaction with the professionals in this course? Well, on the second day, we prepare for uh, the sampling of a crime scene. So on the third day, it's an actual simulated crime scene where students, usually four at a time to a professional, will work with those professionals all day collecting the legal evidence as they would at an actual crime scene. This gives them the chance to learn about the profession, about how their education might be applied in their future life. Oil spills, pipelines, we do a environmental crime scene of a pipeline rupture. So how about the fourth day and the last day of this course? Well, on the fourth day, the students have to learn how to handle all the evidence that they've collected. They may have to use math, they may have to use chemistry, they may have to use principles of putting together evidence, and they have to get ready for the court scene, which is the next day. On July 31st, 2000, the largest inland oil spill and most expensive oil spill in Canadian history happened. And here's the starting of the facts. And part of the things that we teach you in the course, and the things that you do in this profession, is you have to tell a story. You have to tell a story to your boss, the manager of enforcement. You have to tell it to the prosecutor. Later on, you might have to go to court and tell it to the judge. That's great. So can you tell us what would the students take from this course? Well, the students from this course get a chance to explore, first of all, what it's like to work in this profession, either as an engineer, a scientist, or a lawyer, or perhaps a person who puts together information. And they can see from this course and from working with the professionals, they get to talk to them and the professionals will tell them what their education was, what their experience was, and what their career can be. We have an oil pipeline, believe it or not, that goes from Taylor, British Columbia, in northeastern BC, all the way down through the center of the province down in Kamloops. So you better stay taking notes, because these are facts, okay? You're gonna need them for your, your case. The rupture occurred at Pine Pass, 10 hours after the pipeline was sold to another company. Okay, the best, you have to take notes here. 10 hours. Prosecution, take notes. Almost 2,000 cubic meters spilled out of this pipeline into the Pine River. So, and where is the pipeline controlled from? Calgary. Calgary. A person sitting in an office building in front of a bunch of computer screens is controlling the entire pipeline in northeastern British Columbia all the way down to Canada. So we get it a little closer, you fly in, and all we see is this big crater blown in the hole in the ground. This is where the pipeline's going, the river's like this, the highway's up there, and it's sprayed oil 110 meters, and you see those little roadside signs are kind of black. We have to start fixing the pipeline. So, we have to build a bridge. Engineers have to build bridges. How, what is math used in building bridges? Building up the gravel. Gravel is spawning gravel for fish. Under the Fisheries Act, you're not supposed to destroy habitat. So the guys are trying to fix it, but the fishery officer goes running over there and says, hey, wait a minute, you're violating the Fisheries Act. Is that good or bad? Bad. 
So, Peter, you're uh, nominating for the Conservative Party in the writing of North Vancouver. Can you tell us why the education of young students is important to you? It's important for students to get an education because it's for their careers and their future. It's so that they can get good jobs and make a living and help Canada. But it's also important for us because these are the students that are going to solve our problems and create the new ideas of the future. So you can find out more about my campaign at my website, www.votepetercron.com. Thank you.